Hey guys, um, in my last video I talked about service connections in Azure DevOps. Um, today I want to kind of uh, pick on this and talk about uh, pipelines in Azure DevOps. I did a pipeline uh, video, um, I think a while ago, and I want to update this and showcase you with a real project um, how pipelining can be done in Azure DevOps and what the different ways are and what the benefits are of the way I think is the better one. So, yeah, let's uh, directly dive into it. I'm going to explain what we have here. And this time I want to make sure that my face is not in the way the whole time. Let's see how this works um, because I did pretty dumb thing last time. So let's see, I'm, I'm trying. Um, yeah, so what I prepared as a demo project on my Azure DevOps organization, it's um, basically having some infrastructure code. I explain this later. Um, I have no pipeline configured currently, no pipeline here and no pipeline here, but I have created a service connection already um, in order to give me access to my um, Azure resources. So to give the pipeline access to my Azure resources, this is what a service principle uh, or service connection is for. And uh, with this, I am going over to my source code here. <coughs> So, as I said, I prepared a little uh, bit of stuff. Um, so, uh, I'm currently here having some files, infrastructure code, and um, in my infrastructure folder, I have this one. And let me first open this in VS Code and explain a little bit what I have here. So, this basically is, uh, I'm not going into the details here, but this is basically my way or my company's way of deploying stuff. I have bicep files. We're using bicep a lot. Let me zoom a little bit, which are going to um, deploy resource groups in subscriptions and stuff like that. And then deploying resources. This specific pipeline will deploy um, application insights, a web server in um, Azure, a web app on the server using Linux and .NET 7. And then um, URL ping test in the application insights in order to test um, the application. If you are interested in this stuff, please hit me. We will just uh, don't do anything with it currently. Later, my target is that my pipeline will go and um, um, release this automatically every time I have a CI build or pull request or whatever. So this is just me showing you the stuff that is interesting um, here and currently existing. Let me remove this bicep settings file in the root folder. I just saw it. Okay, he didn't do it. Um, can I? Can I not? RM uh, the bicep settings JSON. Oh, yeah. no, I can. Uh, and did I remove it here? No. Okay, cool. So I'm pretty much ready to go. Mm, what I do now is uh, I go in and create a source folder. Let me do this here and I CD into it. Okay. <clears throat> and now let me use .NET new. Um, and I forgot what the command is to deploy a Razor web app here, which is um, short name is just Razor. Okay. Uh, .NET new. Um, or maybe let's create a solution that is this uh, SLN and the name is demo. Okay, let's do this LSA. Okay, and then use uh, Visual Studio this time. Maybe I'm going back and forth between Visual Studio and uh, Writer all the time. So let's open this one up. So I have an empty solution now and I have deleted this. So add it solution and I'm currently working remark that I'm currently working on the main branch directly. I didn't do any branch policies or stuff like that. I just do it directly on main currently for several reasons. You will see this. So I add a solution and remove something, but that's not that uh, important. Let me add as always a solution for the former UI and I will stick to, to the UI completely and I will do an ASP.NET web app. Um, there it is, ASP.NET Core web app. 
Next, I will put it into a UI folder here. They go, this one please, and then I call it UI web app. Cool. .NET 7, please, because that's what I integrated into my um, bicep template. I want to go .NET 7, why not? Create. <clears throat> okay, cool. And I'm not going to change a lot. I will just uh, quickly ensure that it runs locally. Let me try it out. And have a sip of coffee while it's running. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have symbols enabled. So let's see how long does it take. So sorry, I just um, I just uh, skipped a little bit and turned off symbol loading. So that's it. Um, here I am. It is everything plain old standard. And I'm going to commit this into the source code. Um, UI project created. That's basically it. And now let me uh, talk about what, let me minimize this. And let me talk about what's going on. Um, what's next? So first of all, uh, I'm going to push my, um, my changes to my upstream directory um, repository sorry okay now everything is in place that's nice and now let's talk about the components for the ci pipeline so you might know when i'm going back here that if you go to pipelines and go to create pipeline there's this old way using the classic editor in the normal pipelines first of all don't do it anymore this is not good um, for several reasons, I explain this later, but don't use the classic editor. We am trying to use this option instead to um, have our pipeline defined in YAML file, our CI pipeline. So let's do it. So what you basically need and what Azure DevOps is automatically detecting is in your root directory, so basically where your uh, startup is uh, when you put a special file in it special means it's a yaml file and it's named azure-pipelines.yaml um, if you do this then um, azure will auto detect it um, this file so let's try let's go to vs code and i've prepared a yaml file let me um, put this in for you i just copy it here so this is what I talked about. It's called azure-pipelines.yaml. And this is, thank you, thank you. And this is what it's uh, doing. So first of all, you're defining on what kind of machines, of machine sets in Azure, you want this pipeline to run. So this is what you tell him here. So basically what I'm telling him, and uh, hey, this is my CI pipeline, which means we are building on it and doing unit tests on it and whatever. You're telling him, what kind of machine operating system do you want to use? And I'm telling him take an Ubuntu, which is Azure's Linux distribution of choice. Um, take an Ubuntu and uh, take the latest version, please. So this has several advantages. For instance, because I am running here on Windows, I can automatically check if my uh, project um, builds and tests and runs on two separate operating systems which is a good thing that I'm not relying on something specific to Windows. For instance, there are NuGet packages which are not running on Linux, um, which are sometimes pretty important, like, you know, uh, system drawing and stuff like that. They will not run on Windows by choosing a different pipeline infrastructure. You can often ensure that your project is not depending on one operating system, which is nice. Then what I do, I define some variables, which I later can use in the pipeline. So this one is a copy artifact. I'm going to name this demo SLN. So this is kind of logical. As you can see, there's a relative path here and I'm naming it solution and telling him, and you know what? I am going to uh, uh, build 
later this demo SLN, which is in this relative path. Relative means from my project root. I want to build in release and I want you to um, detect unit test projects by searching for this filter in the source directory. So everything inside of source, which also could be inside of tests or whatever you, your structure is, should be built, uh, should be a unit test. A pretty important setting here in order to achieve what I wanted to achieve is to make this um, not be triggered by any changes on any branch. Now, um, I want to target a continuous integration build, which means it should build on certain events. And it seems counterintuitive to give him a non-trigger, but it is very important. You will see this later. So we're not, we're setting this trigger for this pipeline to none. And then comes the usual step or the usual section of defining the steps in which um, the pipeline should execute stuff. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling him, you know what, first of all, I'm just quickly go through. First of all, copy my complete infrastructure folder to the artifact staging directory slash infrastructure folder, which he will create for me. So what you can see here are several things. Um, you can see that there are not only build specific tas tasks, there are all kinds of tasks you can execute, like a simple copying of files. The, uh, the second thing is that you get certain um, magical variables. So that is the way um, a YAML pipeline defi or references a variable. And so, for instance, if I show you build configuration, this is used here at the bottom. You see, this is how you access a variable. So uh, dollar and in parentheses, then the variable name references to this variable. So that means that this is, uh, um, is referencing a variable I never defined. I don't have build sources directory here. If you search for this online, let me go to Google and just search you will get this use predefined variables in Azure Pipeline section. Um, this one uh, is showing you which variables, let me scroll a little bit here, for instance, are available for you by default in every pipeline. So agent build directory, agent ID, and everything is explained. So you have kind of uh, environment variables you can use, and they are explained here. For instance, we're using this artifact staging directory, which is a directory where we can, and I explain this later, put our artifacts, so the results of our build to. Why and what this means, I'll explain this later. So, okay, I'm first copying just some files to the stage. Okay, and then I copy additional files, um, like Azure DevOps scripts here, uh, and there is no Azure DevOps script to this sta uh, stage, and I will show this later. For now, what I take out here is that probably I need the folder be existing here. So I'm just creating a new folder, which is dash Azure DevOps. And then I will create a new folder in it, which is called scripts. And then maybe so that this exists, I'm doing a readme.mb. This is a, always a good idea. So you have something in this folder. Otherwise, this pipeline would fail and saying, hey, I cannot find this one. What's going on? So currently, I'm just copying over when this complete folder to the destination folder pipeline scripts. Keep this in mind. The next thing I do is I go to the infrastructure um, and maybe I should do this lowercase, the infrastructure and execute a build piece one which exists here. Um, and this build PS1 magically just kind of checks if my infrastructure code, my bicep is correct. So what is basically doing, I can show you the, the most important line is this one. It's just preparing kind of stuff. And then it goes bicep build, then the bicep file, which is basically the main uh, bicep. And it uh, puts the result of this into an out file, which is the main JSON inside of this file. So <clears throat> um, this is just uh, um, defined to fail on standard error faults. Um, and it's a PowerShell test because it's running PowerShell scripts on PowerShell core. PWSH is set to true. 
Okay, that's it. When this uh, succeeds, it's copying the result, which is in the ARM templates folder, which was defined by this main PSON. It copies this one ARM output to ARM templates in the artifact staging directory. So basically what's happening here is I'm using Bicep to convert Bicep to regular um, Azure Resource Manager output, JSON. And uh, if this works, um, I copy out uh, all the resulting ARM JSON over to the, start, the stage. Now what's happening is that I'm using .NET 7, not .NET 6. Um, I'm ensuring that the build machine is ready to use .NET 7. And then I go over and run first .NET Restore in my build configuration, then .NET Build without Restore, very important mm, here, so that uh, the Restore is not happening twice. Same configuration. Then I copy, this is uh, stupid, uh, you don't need it. So then I'm doing um, .NET Test. I don't have any test project, but anyway, again, you see here how I built up the no build, no restore because I did it already. He cannot know this, but I did it already. And then I'm going to .NET publish without restore and build um, to the artifact staging directory, which is this magical string there. Uh, what I do here is this is not so important. And now and the last task uh, in a CI pipeline should always be the publishing of the build artifacts. This is kind of a um, standard way in Azure DevOps to tell him whatever came out in this artifact staging directory, which is my path I always publish to, um, please keep it um, after the build was running, keep it somewhere, which is uh, the publish. Um, uh, uh, artifact uh, area. Why is this important? You have to keep in mind, we defined here at the top that we want him to run a VM. I think it's a Docker image right now, but I'm not sure. Um, he, so he's spinning up a machine whenever we want to run this pipeline. And now he gets git clones everything onto this machine and runs those commands, the steps. Cool. But when he's done, so let's say when this last step, this last real step is done, this means he will wipe the complete machine because this is just a machine on demand we're using. This is because I am using machines provided by Azure. Um, I could use machines um, provided by myself and reference them, but this is not solving my problem. Um, I still need something outside this build agent, build machine, um, where I can store my results in some way. So this is why this last step is so important to get everything out from this machine to a location I can later access. So that's basically it. Um, that's my file and I can easily test my file by doing the following. I have my source code now. I hope that everything is correct. We will see what I do. I just um, added CI pipeline, which is currently not a CI pipeline because it has no trigger. But anyway, I commit and push and remember I did it to my main branch, right? So what I now do, do I go over to Azure DevOps, again, go to my pipelines here and I'm creating a pipeline and now I'm hitting on, you know what? I uh, have this pipeline in YAML in the repo. So I, I tell him that it's in the demo rep, uh, repository. It could be in any other repository too. So I add it and now he found it just like that because he's searching for uh, some uh, certain um, a magic file. This is the automatic way of doing it. I could name it whatever way I want it and uh, could configure it manually. But by putting an Azure Pipelines YAML in the root, um, directory, he will automatically find this first pipeline. So uh, what I then do is that I don't run it, but I save it first of all, because what I don't like is he's auto naming this in some way. And what I, I, I want to rename this pipeline. So I go to rename and then I just call it CI because that's what it's later going to be. If you don't know what CI means, it means continuous integration. It's a, it's a shortcut. 
So my target for this pipeline is that it kind of runs on certain events automatically later. Um, okay, save. So first, uh, first, first thing first, whoa, that was complicated. Let me run this pipeline um, the first time and let me run it on the main branch. Okay, I have several options here. I'm not um, hit this, I just hit run and there is an offer this pipeline is not valid job Azure connected service arm reference reference dev tier. Okay, let's take a look. I did something wrong. So let's uh, search here in my pipeline for something. Ah, you can see it. So what I did is I'm running a, I'm running a special task, which is a pipeline uh, a bicep build. And this bicep build needs to have um, a service connection. So my service connection was not named correctly. It's called dev deer test. Let me show you what I mean. I showed you the service connection just a second before and its name is dev deer and then test and not dev deer. Okay, that is why he's complaining uh, already um, because he checks the file and sees no, 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 it's not going to work. Okay, um, changed service connection name. Okay, let's go and commit and push in one step from VS Code. And let's go to my pipeline and then run new, run. Let's see if it runs now. And if it starts running, I will pause the video um, and come back when it's uh, when it's good. It's cute right now. And let's wait a little bit. Are you running? Let me go inside of it because Oh, he's not able to copy. So what's going on? Home VSTS work infrastructure. So again, might be an uppercase uh, issue. Did I do it again? Yes, here is infrastructure. Sometimes he's very picky about this naming here. Let me rename this. You can watch over my shoulder how I'm feeling. That's totally okay. Because, you know, there's a golden rule in my workday if I implement an Azure pipeline, no matter how often I did it in the last, I don't know how many years, it always fails the first five times for some reason. I cannot, you know, I always copy it over logically and I always forget something or do something wrong. So the source folder is not found. It's remember it's running on Linux uh, and Linux is um, case sensitive. So I hope this is this case changes in pipe. I don't have to put this. Let's do it again. Let's go back, run new. Again on the main branch, it's the only branch I have. Let's run it a third time and see if it's going to run. So you can watch it while it's running. When If, if you never saw this, this is basically, um, by the way, the same principle as it is in GitHub Actions and stuff like that, all those tools. This is, um, now it's working. And um, I will come back when this thing uh, ran through. Welcome back. Believe it or not, I had to run it uh, another time because I messed up another infrastructure, capital I. So we are on a new record for Mr. Uh, Schmidt, which is me, uh, which is four times the first time. Not bad. I'm making progress on this. But anyway, let us talk about what we see here. So basically, as you can see, besides the initializing job stuff and the checkout, which I never defined in my pipeline, he's doing it automatically because he knows that I need the sources, right? So he's checking out um, whatever I gave him. Now from this step on, basically from here to uh, here, this is the section which is defined by me in this file. So those things are done by him uh, as kind of a preparing stage and those things are done by him to clean up everything. Um, okay, so uh, you can later watch everything, uh, every output that was basically running on the um, on the machine, on the agent. You see it's built, ran, test will create a warning, I think. It always creates a warning because I don't have a UDIN test uh, um, file, so this is natural. And so this run finished, nice. When I go back, let me go to pipelines now and I see it ran through. Demo CI is success. When I go here, 51 seconds, not bad. 
and now I see my three failed runs. Um, okay, when I click on the run which um, worked out, I see the warning because of, uh, of the not present test file, which is good because it reminds me of putting unit tests in it. And then I see here this little link, which is the most important thing, which is um, my artifacts. And I can look here and see uh, this is my um, web, um, zip publish file, which he generated during the publish step of .NET 7. This is what um, .NET, uh, .NET publish with the zip option does. And I see all the folders, which I told you, like this is my ARM templates folder containing my main JSON. Let's uh, download it. You cannot view it. You only can download it. This is um, ignore. Uh, this is what it then looks like um, here, as you can see, and I have a project open and this is basically coming from my uh, by, uh, from my bicep and this is why I use bicep because as I scroll through and making you sick um, on purpose, this is what I don't want to write anymore. Uh, so this is why we use bicep at my company. Okay, cool. Let's go back here. Oh, he closed it. I don't know why. So let's go back. Uh, Dev Azure.com coding freaks demo build. I don't know what's going on. So uh, keep in mind now that we have a pipeline which is named CI, which is not a CI pipeline. It will be in a second. And now it's generating all the stuff for me, which is nice. Okay, cool. So let's make a CI pipeline out of it. So in order to do it, and remember, we defined that the trigger should be none for the pipeline in the YAML. So we did it on purpose because what we now can do, we can go over to my repo section and to my branches, and then we can tell him, you know what? This main branch should have a policy. So in this policy, I uh, tell him, you know what? I require a minimum amount of reviewers so this is already should tell you something. This is smelling like pull request and it is pull request. If you don't know anything about pull request and want to know more about it, how we do it or whatever, um, please hit me in the comment section, no problem. So the main important thing here is that we now have the opportunity to tell them, you know what, we want to do build validation, which is another word for continuous integration builds, CI builds. So I click the plus here, add a new build policy. And I'm telling him, you know what, take my CI pipeline, which is the only I have, and I'll leave everything as it is and do save. Why? Uh, oh, uh, the settings for are not, the build pipeline zero wasn't found. Is that true? Uh, and can I do it now? <laughs> you saw this? I hope so. <laughs> Makes no sense, but anyway. So here it is. I now have a build validation in it and I have a, a branch policy with a minimum of reverse one. Let me do a trick which you should never do, which is this checkbox, because otherwise this demo is going to be very, very lame because I would wait for a request which never arrives. So I now can reprove my own change, my own pull request which is not the usual thing. This never should be done by you guys. Okay, cool. So if I now look into the branches again, now you can see here this little mark, which tells you there is a build policy on it. And what it means, if you're new to it, is let me demo this. Uh, let's go and um, go to my, um, what is going on, to my demo folder. And now let's uh, create a file. Uh, so let's do it. Hello to test. Oh no, to test txt. So this is an easy way to create a new file, which uh, should create a git change. So I'm adding it, uh, committing it locally. Mm, added a test file. So this commit now is locally. And now I'm trying to push it. Okay. And what you can see or should see is that it does not work. I'm on main branch. I'm trying to push and he says, no, 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 you're not allowed to push. You're not permitted because of the branch policy. 
because the branch policy says at least one person has to approve this change, first of all. And second of all, um, we have to run a build validation. So you cannot directly push to the main branch. That's not possible. Cool. Um, so um, let me see. Can I reset hard? Uh, yes, I can. <clears throat> so I removed everything I did. So this is obviously not going to happen. Okay, let me clean this. <clears throat> and now the way to go is, for instance, to create a remote branch or create it locally and then push it. But I'm doing it from Azure DevOps site. So let me create a new branch, which is my demo branch, whatever. Um, create this branch. Here it is um, on the remote site and it has no policy and it should not. So now I'm doing a fetch to see if my uh, Git is seeing it. Yeah, it's seeing it. Git checkout uh, demo. Cool. Let me do uh, this again. Um, where's my, there it is. Again, a test file, which I will remove in a second. And then uh, git at everything, uh, git commit, edit a test file, git push. So now my changes are upstream. Nice. Uh, if I refresh, he should see, hey, you updated demo just now. Do you want to create a pull request? Yes, sir. I am. That's exactly what I'm going to do. You could hit this button or which is barely visible here on my dark mode, or you go here and create a new pull request. Okay. So let's do this. And now automatically he will select main because main is my default on and compare branch in Azure DevOps. Let me show you what I mean here. Those tags are telling me main is my default and compare branch. So this is always selected for as a target for pull requests whenever I hit new pull request. If I only have one commit, he will automatically give me the commit message as the message for the pull request. Let's use it. Why not? And now I can create the pull request and now the magic happens. So the magic. So what's happening is, first of all, he says you have somebody has to approve. OK, and then even if an approval is there, I need to run the demo CI because that was configured. So he automatically now runs this pipeline for me. This run then will be a PR pipeline run. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to the pipelines here, you can see that it is linked to the pull request for uh, my pull request six, number six. Uh, it is the fifth one which runs today. Um, and it should run about one minute as you have seen, because I just added a test file and then it will be associated to this pull request as long as this pull request lives and vice versa. As long as the build is possible here in this list, it will be associated to the pull request, which is nice. So now it is a CI pipeline because I am triggering it on a branch. And that is exactly why I had not set the trigger or why I set the trigger to none because I don't want it to run just on a branch change just like that. I want it to run whenever a pull request is made. Um, so this is why the trigger is set to none. Okay, nice, succeeded. Um, I can set the autocomplete to complete. Uh, I don't know if anything, just I don't want to delete here the demo stage. And then I hit approve. I approved and then the merging happenings because I can approve my own pull request, which is dumb. But anyway, it is completed. So now it is in the list of my completed pull request. I was the reviewer of my own pull request. That's nice. And when I go here later, I always can see uh, that um, this is, uh, I think, where's the pipeline run? Oh, show details. Merge strategy. This is that here. Here it is. Demo CI. I, I this dark mode is so badly in VS um, Azure DevOps. But anyway, this is nice. So what would be the next step? And I'm just showcasing you the old way uh, a little bit. And then we talk about why this is bad. And then I show you the YAML way, the new way of doing it and why you should do it. So if you want, you can skip the old way. Of course, I will put um, um, a timeline uh, in YouTube so that you can skip it. So when you go to release pipelines here, 
this pipeline was already YAML. Now you can go to release pipelines, add a new pipeline. He hits you with this um, default experience in release pipelines, right? So he's not even asking you if you are going to create um, a pipeline using YAML or from your Git repository. He's directly going into it. So let me tell you, this is the old way to do it, the old way. And I think over a period of time, this will probably die. Um, I don't know what Microsoft plans are. The point here is that um, this clicking together a pipeline is a pretty bad idea. Uh, it gives you a lot of trouble, especially uh, remember if you want to look at this, go to my last video, especially if you have something configured on another way. And now, for instance, the password for your service connection uh, is expired. So even if you then recreate your service connection, which you need to do, um, and give it a new password if you do an automatic service uh, uh, connection. Even if you do this and name it the same, he's not referencing it by name, this pipeline, he's referencing it by an ID which you cannot set. So you have to recreate all the pipelines or restore all the pipelines. This is bad stuff, okay? And it always enerved me. But now uh, let me uh, showcase you just um, quick as possible. Here's a template for this app service deployment template. You can add it. You can create a stage. Let's say integration, which, which would be the first stage uh, if you do it correctly or however you name it. As you see, it's a nice editor here. This is making um, things a little bit easier for people. Now you would go here and tell him, you know what? what you want to deploy and I'm going here and tell him I want to deploy from uh, my whatever comes out whatever artifact comes out of the demo CI build pipeline the latest of it um, or another option um, I want to deploy this at so now you have something which gets deployed and then you go here and tell him which is your subscription and now here, you're not selecting the Azure subscription, you're selecting um, the service connection. Let us see if he's getting it or if again, he is complaining. Let me pause the video for a second. Here he is, uh, just as I click pause, it came, of course. So here you can see, this is my service connection. Those are my subscriptions. I don't wanna use the subscription because you would create a service connection automatically. Don't do it always use available Azure service connections. Go here, there it is. It is a web app on Linux. And now you can theoretically search here. He's searching and you see there's nothing deployed because I never ran my infrastructure scripts. But anyway, you could use, let us do this for whatever reason, save this, and then you can go back to your pipeline and that's your first stage. And what you now can do, which is pretty interesting, you can select here in this interface a trigger, which is telling you, and this is exactly what we want, we want this pull request trigger to happen if the main branch is the target of the pull request and optionally if build tags are present. And then he's warning us that this tr uh, trigger here on the CI pipeline is configured, but not on, the, on any of the stages. So now I'm going to integration and hitting this little arrow. And then I can just simply switch on this switch to saying it is a pull request deployment. So there is a trigger. And then I can go here and he's fine. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. So if a pull request is running, this is triggered. So now this CD pipeline is triggered automatically. That's interesting, okay. Let's go back here. So as you can see, there are some additional options on the um, input uh, or at the entrance and ex at the exit of this pipeline um, environment or stage, as he calls it. So what you can configure here, basically, which is interesting, is that before this stage gets deployed, somebody should be able to approve it. Uh, so you can optionally trigger this on. More interesting for us in, in our uh, environment is that we have this post-deployment condition, which again allows me to have approvals. 
So this is what we use a lot. I can use my user here and tell him, you know what, if this is running and if this is deployed successfully to Azure, I want you before going to the next pipeline, um, I want you to have this person to approve this. So what I could do now is I just clone this step, call this my test pipeline. Uh, and then I have again cloned everything. And then I can clone this and call this production. Kind of. Just to give you the idea, okay? So, and then what you see here is very nice because I have my CI pipeline running once. And then after it ran, uh, it then triggers my integration stage. But afterwards, it never runs again for this release, for this version of my software. It is redeploying the same artifacts, the same binary stuff through the stages, or I can disapprove of deploying it and then I need a new CI pipeline to deploy a new version, whatever. So this is how it should be. Um, this is why I separate CI pipelines, demo CI, from CD pipelines. Okay, this is the way to do. Uh, to define this pipeline in the UI, the old way. What's interesting um, on the old way or about the old way, if you go here and edit the pipeline, there is on every of the steps, here's the list of steps where you could do things. There is this link which came there, I don't know, two years ago, or whatever. So you're defining everything here by selecting stuff but then you can click on this button and it shows you how this step would look in YAML. Aha. So this kind of points out, oh, there is a way to define releases in YAML. So interesting. Okay, cool. What Microsoft missed completely is if I go to the complete agent run here or the complete agent or even here, I would have wished that here is a view YAML button for everything, but no. Normally you have to imagine that there's a lot of steps. So Microsoft decided no, no all YAML button for this pipeline. Only every single step has a YAML trans, um, uh, transformation button so that it can look what YAML it would be. So for instance, if I want to be explicit here, uh, ui.webzip or whatever if i change something and i go to the yaml he will show me oh that's how you define it here in your package for linux stuff whatever okay so at least this is a good thing because if you now have an existing project in azure devops where you already have pipelines running in this ui based mode what you could do is simply uh, just tell him, you know what, um, go there and um, uh, take, uh, give me the YAML so I can switch over to the new way, which I will show you now. We will never run this pipeline. Normally we would call this kind of CD, whatever. I'm just leaving it as it is uh, so that you can see now you have this new release pipeline, which is the name, and uh, you will see how we do it now the correct way. So let me switch over again to my VS Code. So here we are. Remember a few steps ago that we defined this readme file in order to have a scripts folder. So let me copy in a new file, which is the Azure release YAML, which I put here in the in this folder, uh, Azure DevOps uh, scripts, which is not what I wanted to do in the first place. Oh, scripts is another one. Let's go to Azure DevOps here, move it here and have it Azure release YAML directly in Azure DevOps scripts comes later. You will see what this is. So Azure release YAML. So it looks familiar because it is the same YAML language as the CI pipeline. <clears throat> I put the CI pipeline into this other folder. As you can see, Visual Studio Code is um, detecting this here and marking it with a special symbol because it's that magic Azure Dash pipelines YAML, which he knows. So now I have an Azure release YAML. Name it how you want it. This doesn't matter anymore. 
So and then the same thing, first of all, variable section. So what I do here, I'm creating this section and giving him the service connection name, which is remember DFT test. So it uses the same service connection. And then in my project, I'm referencing this, uh, I will add uh, the name of demo, which is the name of my project. And then here uh, I have to uh, the next section, which says resources, which says uh, which kind of is the replacement of let me go back here and to the pipeline which is kind of doing the same as this thing so connecting this to my ci pipeline so what i tell him here is if i name it the same way so remember my ci pipeline was named demo ci i basically create a variable here of type pipeline and name it CI so that I can reference it inside of the script. So this CI is just a name, you can use whatever. This is then connecting it to the demo pipeline, which was named demo CI. Be careful, do not, from this point on, do not rename your CI pipeline carelessly. And the next one is giving a trigger true which is kind of saying the CI pipeline is triggering this pipeline. So this comes automatically after the CI, which is good. Again, I'm telling him, you know what? You should use Ubuntu latest uh, for running agent, uh, for running the pipeline. And again, I'm telling him, don't do it automatically. This is the trigger, this is not. This not the complete pipeline is running whenever some branch changes, don't do it run it after the CI pipeline, which means no trigger from your side, something else is triggering you. Keep it this way. Then something interesting happens, which is called the stages first. So not steps, but stages. Remember uh, that we had this concept here too, stages, here it is. Now we are going to this side of the story in the YAML. So what I'm doing, I'm defining stages. Stages technically are environments, which is in Azure DevOps on this side. And it happens to be that I created no environment currently, which is totally fine. You will see it. So because whenever you have the pipeline uh, later running, it will auto-generate non-existing pipelines, um, environments. So I give it a display name, which is the same and then I give it a job. Remember, I'm inside of the stage integration. I give it a job, which is, I simply call it deploy um, in the environment integration. Okay. Um, and with the VM image configured here at the top. Um, and then I go to a strategy and tell him there are different strategies. Go and look in the documentation, please. Just run it once at, for every trigger. And then this is what you do. You deploy something, please. And those are the steps. So there are other sections here. Like I, I don't even sure is, was it prep or pre run or something like that. So you could split your strategy and your run configuration into several phases. Let's say like pre config, run the deployment and then post config, whatever you could do. Okay. And now we come to the steps. So first of all, we tell him to download the artifact. Remember, we just published the artifact in the CI pipeline. Now we download it to this machine. And then I have to uh, execute some tasks, which hopefully will work. I will uh, do the lowercase here now. Uh, let me see if I hit everything. So believe me that this is not that important. Um, it's just my way of doing it, deploy the pipeline. And this is now an interesting uh, step here. So I expect this thing to basically create the resources in Azure for me using Bicep. So for doing this, I'm executing a PS1 file, which again, my, you might have seen this. I'm not going into detail here. I hope this works. So, but the interesting part here is in order for him to do it, he has to use the service connection in order to deploy it. So this is where I'm referencing it. So at this point in time, I'm deploying to Azure every time my pipeline runs. And for this point in time, I'm thinking, you know what, at this point, all the resources must exist. 
So what I do here is I'm uh, doing kind of my way. Okay, I'm stopping the app service, but I'm not stopping the complete app service. I'm stopping the deploy slot. We will talk about this in a second. Then I'm deploying my not services core, my UI web app zip. So where is this coming from? Let's go to the CI pipeline. Again, let us look here. Remember that we saw on the artifacts in the drop, we directly in this drop folder, we saw ui.webapp.zip. Okay, now we are using exactly the same name, but we now expect it to be in the pipeline workspace folder, which again is those magic variable, look it up. So we are basically saying, look on your machine, your agent, there should be ui.webapp.zip, use it. Okay, nice. Then I start the slot again in Azure. This is how you do it. So it is referencing here API DD project int, which is integration stage. And then I start it. And then something interesting happens, a slot health check. So this slot health check here is something which needs to be existing in the drop pipeline uh, folder. If we look here again, there is pipeline scripts which is not pipeline. So I should do pipeline scripts. I'm not even sure if this is true and pipeline scripts. So because this comes from my CI pipeline, right? It should be here inside of the drop folder of the CI pipeline. This is referencing, by the way, this CI here. So the artifacts of this pipeline are referenced and later are uh, creating a folder where everything is downloaded to. So inside of it, now the structure, the relative structure of this takes place. So here's a drop, drop, and then in pipeline scripts, there is only a readme currently. This is why I created the scripts folder in the first place. So let me put in my script here, which is a check health PS1. So this is uh, taking I think demo should be the right thing to use uh, or is it? How did I name it? Let me for a second wait here. It's CF demo here. Okay, all the resources will be CF demo, sorry. So let me go back to my release. It will just execute this check health script, which I explain later. First of all, let's uh, use it. But what I've just seen is that project is not demo. It is, sorry for this. CF demo. This is the link between my pipeline and my infrastructure code. Okay, so it should work. And then he's swapping the slots because I'm not using containers here. And then there is the next stage here, which we will maybe talk in a second. Uh, let me remove those stages for the second. Let's skip with one stage and let's see if this is working. So what I'm going to do going to do is edit release pipeline yaml and uh, check script and let me put this into uh, my um, demo branch because it's the only way I can put it into. Okay, first things first. Now, in order to now go to my pipelines, what, what I want to do, let me put it this way. What I want to do is I want to add a new pipeline. Okay, not a new release, a new pipeline. So if I go here now, I want it now to be not in the classic editor, I want it to be in the Git. So I go here and then I can say it's somewhere here and he says, I don't find anything. And now I'm kind of stuck here in this dialogue. I think this is, by the way, a big fail by Microsoft that you get stuck here. So let me explain what you should do. You go to pipelines, you create a new pipeline. And the only way I know how to do it is I use the classic editor. Uh, no, I don't use it. Uh, let me go back. I always skip this I'll create new one. Azure repos. Uh, how are we doing it? Let me see. Um, I always forget this. This is bad. New Azure pipeline. 
and then use classic without YAML and then this one, continue. And then I have YAML here, right? So, and then I could do this one, apply this, and then he wants me to define my YAML, which I cannot do currently because it's not there. Why is not there? Because it needs to be on the branch, which normally triggers all the stuff. <laughs> so now we're kind of stuck. What we need to do, in fact, is to go to my branches and create, first of all, a pull request without this. So I'm ahead one. This is where my YAML is in it. So I create a new pull request. I'm using this create. I will auto complete it and approve it. And I will come back when everything is ready for us. So uh, my pipeline is uh, ready. Um, and it worked. Uh, so let's see uh, now if I can create my CD pipeline. Go over to pipelines, run a new one, use classic, go here, switch to YAML. Again, if you know a better way, please let me know. Select now in Azure DevOps. Now it's existing on my main branch, select it and then uh, call it demo-cd, please, and save it. Don't queue it right away. Let's look what we have now in all pipelines. Remember to switch to all because it had no runs and now he does not know. So now it's there and now let's just run it from here. First of all, manually, not in a PR, just manually. Run the pipeline on the latest main branch and let's see if it's running on before I pause the video again. So now the pipeline complains that it needs permission. This is always when you run it the first time, I tell him, yes, do it. And I permit the pipeline, permit. And now it's permitted, thank you. So I don't have to permit it again. I think I have to permit only again when I introduce the next stage. We will see this later. And now I'm waiting and the job is initialized. Let me see if this runs through, I'm coming back. And it fails. And this is exactly what I expected it to do. So it fails at a certain uh, step, which is uh, check slot health. But before we go into details why it's failing and why it's good that it failed, um, let me explain what happened. So it's downloading the artifact he then installs some precondition I need to run my bicep modules and then he's deploying the bicep. So what actually happened, let me show you this in the Azure portal. He just created this resource group in this subscription and he deployed everything I need for, uh, in order for my application to run. See how he is doing the naming conventions and everything. And he's creating a web app basically with application insights configured and a deploy slot behind it. If you don't know what that means, again, write me in the comments if you need more content on this, why this is good and so on. So, but if you know what I'm doing, you see that I'm deploying to the deploy slot all the time. Then I want to perform a health check on the deploy slot. And if this is not failing, if it's Okay, the health check. Only then I want to swap the deploy slot with the UI slot. So keeping this in mind, I can check if something uh, really cool happens. So my web app is this one, right? This is the one my customers should face later. So I can go here and I will see, no, your web app is running and waiting for content. Nothing got deployed here. So if uh, you know, now go here to the URL and hit dash deploy, which is the name of the slot. What you actually get is now it's taking some time. It's spinning up and this should be my .NET 7 app. And I'm not sure if this is working because I had struggle with .NET 7 in the past on deploy slots, but let's see, there it is. It's working. This is my web app, but it's currently running on the deploy slot and it did not get swapped. So my customers uh, see the old side, okay? Why is that? 
So the step which is failing here is executing this PowerShell script I just copied over. So let's take a look at it. So this PowerShell script here in Azure DevOps scripts check health, it is going to get a parameter which is int test or prod. In our case, when we look into the pipeline, into the step, here is the step, uh, here it is, check health. And it's passing in int as the stage. So that should work because this is how our website is named. So he's going here and trying to hit the health endpoint. So let's go and check if there is a health endpoint running. And no, there's not. We get, this is basically 404 telling us there is no health endpoint. So this is because we never, in our web app, we never configured health endpoints. So let's do it now. Um, I think it's app uh, use health checks uh, on slash health. I think it's the way to do it. Always can remember, let's test it locally. So let's run this now, this new line. <clears throat> and let's see if we locally can hit slash health. Unable to find required service. I think it is because I need to build their services at health checks, right? Oh, I switched to uppercase. There you go. That is what I need to do. And let me run my reshopper. So maybe this should be more clear so i know so let's try again if now the health checks are running under slash health so slash health and now we get healthy okay cool so let's look here uh if our script is checking correctly first of all he is going to get the response and if the response is 200, he's fine. He's not checking for the content currently. He's just checking if it's getting 200. Okay, um, and then he waits five seconds, checks again, whatever. So this should work fine. Um, added health checks. And now we can bring everything into place. So now currently, this is exactly the situation uh, which is showcasing what we want to achieve with our pipelines, right? So currently my pipeline failed. This is nice. It should fail because the health check failed for whatever reason, I don't care. But later when I implemented health checks, I could use .NET to inside the health checks, check my database behind it, check other services, whatever is needed. Anyways, what I wanted to do, I don't want it to swap the page my customers see uh, while it's not healthy. So it did its job, fine. So, but now uh, we changed something, right? And now I can go here and create a pull request because I just pushed a change. I create a pull request and added health checks. And what now happens is if I create the pull request, I don't have to run this build. I should not uh, have to run this build. So what should happen is I just leave it open, set it to autocomplete, um, but you know, don't approve it so that it stays open. What I expected to, to do is to first run the CI pipeline that he's going to do. And then I expected to automatically when this is done and put its artifacts to the appropriate location, then it should trigger the CD pipeline automatically. So that is why it's called CD continuous delivery, because after the CI, we always want to try out the delivery in on, on a real stage, on the real thing, which is in our case, Azure. So let's wait out. I don't pause the video here because it should finish like in 10 seconds or something like this. Let's see. And then when the CD pipeline is running uh, or will run, I just will pause the video again because the CD pipeline takes like five minutes that's normal because he's always rechecking if my resources in Azure are matching to my definition in biceps. So let's see if he's coming up. Yes, yeah, he does. I refreshed the page and now this CD pipeline is automatically triggered again. Let's watch him doing his thing. And as you can see, I had 
a second run while this was paused. But anyway, let's go here and check if the deployment runs. And this is, you know, again, I'm not covering the details on those two steps, which are maybe interesting for you guys. I don't know. I don't want to cover it. Again, hit me in the comment section if you want to see something about how I just like that deploy Azure resources. And now this will run for some minutes. I'm going to pause the video right now again, and then I'm coming back if this hopefully ran through. So I'm already back. It's looking pretty good. We came over the step of the which failed the last run. So this is now, <clears throat> let me explain, it's stopping the deploy slot, not the complete website, but the deploy slot. It's deploying my, um, my .NET app to the slot. And then it's starting the slot by doing stop and start here. What I can achieve is that I'm ensuring that the, no process is blocking any file while I'm deploying. This is like common on, on Azure Web Apps, uh, sadly, but you know, it is what it is. And then I am doing my slot check, uh, which is my PowerShell script. And this is now you can see why, I, why I'm doing it in a loop, like up to 10 times um, I'm checking the slot because it takes some time after the uh, slot was kind of restarted after the deployment. It takes some time for him in order to answer to requests. So usually a few seconds, I'm waiting like five seconds. So this is about maybe 10 seconds after the restart. And then I get 200 and I'm fine. And now the last step is running currently, which is the slot swap. What now will happen is he will kind of replace the current deployment slot with the productive app. And what I expect it to do when I go over here and just remove dash deploy here and dash health. Currently, it's still in this state, right? So now this machine gets IP wise replaced with the de former deploy machine. They switch roles and then in a matter of seconds, it should switch over um, when swap slot is done um, to be the new productive thing. This can take some time because it's doing stuff on DNS side, uh, Azure internally. So the customers don't uh, recognize any delay while this is happening. That's exactly why you need a swap slot when you're going platform and doing professional stuff. You see it's still running and now it's swapped. Now my customers can see the new web app. Yes. So, and by the way, the slot now, the former slot, if I go back to deploy, it's not removed, right? It is now showing me this thing. So this enables me to swap back anytime I want. Um, because something did not work out quite as I expected to be. This is why integration stages are so damn important here. Nice. It worked. So let me show you now, maybe if I go back to the pipelines and we let him, you know, come clear here. If we go to the CD pipeline and, uh, now go and uh, just add another stage, let me show you that I really, really uh, deploy freshly in Azure. So when I go back here, there's only integration stage. So the next natural stage, stage for me would be test. So let's go to and create a test stage by, to be honest, a pretty simple thing. I just copy the complete stage, which is this one. I just copy this complete thing and then I go here and paste it. Let me see if I got my YAML right. I always mess this up and now do test, test and test here. And let me see if everything is right. What I need to do is here in my script, I now have to tell him that the natural way to, um, to call my deploy uh, is to deploy a test stage. And then I have to see here everything which is int, which should be my stage name, by the way. But anyway, uh, I could use a variable here. Let's do it manually. It's not the best way to do it. Dash int, the same as here. Let's replace everything with test. Also when checking the slot and then when coming up again. So let me see if this is now clean uh, by 
searching for dash int. Where is it? Is it? This is the integration thing. This is okay. Now I don't expect it to be here anywhere. No, no, no matches here. Looks nice. Fingers crossed. Let's go back here. So the pipeline now the first time ever just managed to run. And let me show you something interesting, which is the environment section. Now, as you can see, without me doing anything, the environment happened to be here. So if I click on the environment, he shows me the deployments on this environment, which is pretty nice. Um, so this section was empty before. And now when I create the, um, when I check in this stuff here, uh, just let me edit the test environment and just pushing this. And I first of all have to um, approve my pull request, as I see here. Let me approve this one. So this was, oh no, um, uh, he's doing it automatically. Yeah. <laughs> so he got my uh, new, um, my new thing. Let us uh, wait for offer here. So uh, because the pull request was running, I'm an idiot, that's why. But because the pull request was running, he saw my new push coming in and he's simply rerunning while the pull request is still open, which is good. So he will build the demo CI again and then it should something interesting should happen. Let me go to the pipeline and wait till this is done and this is started. <clears throat> Maybe I pause the video till it's running. Yeah, so he's not rerunning us because it's in the same pull request I had, uh, I would have to do it. But now watch what happens if I try to run it manually on my branch. He will complain if I run it that he cannot do it because a new environment was added and uh, it was not authorized for this environment. So I cannot just add environments in the same pull request, obviously. So let me go to my pull request here and approve it so that everything gets merged onto main proof and it's going to be merged. I'm happy with that. And let's run my pipeline manually. I'm not sure if this is the correct way of doing it. Normally I would have everything in place on the first manual run, but this shows you that you need to run your pipelines one time manually. I think run the pipeline on main run and it's still environment test code not be found, the environment does not exist or had not been authorized for use. So can I just, it's an interesting thing, uh, manage security, no. Okay, let me add my environment here quickly, uh, manually this time. He should do it automatically, but I'm not sure why he's not doing it. But anyway, let me add the test environment, create it. There it is. And let me see um for um to, to show you that i also can add approvals here so what i want him i don't want him to automatically deploy to test just when it's running so that would mean that without my approval he will just deploy all the stages right without any ending he's just going to production or whatever my stages so let add an approval here and let's add myself as an approver um, and what uh, is important here, you uh, again can uh, allow the approvers to approve their own runs, which makes sense here. And if you have multiple approvers, you need to ensure that either all of them must be approved or one of them, which is always uh, a hard thing to understand. But now I have an approval on this pipeline. And let me see if I can run the pipeline now, finally, manually on the main branch. Let's see, run. Now it's at least starting with integration and now you get this UI experience, which you know, mm, you might know from the old release pipeline. Remember that we have those integration and stuff like that. So he's deploying integration because he has no issue in deploying it. He's already authorized and he should, I will pause the video again. He's, he should stop here to, to tell us, I'm not authorized to deploy test yet, okay? And when this um, thing is um, achieved, I will re uh, come back from this video. So I again could 
click here to watch the deployment and integration happening. And now the approval will only happen if integration is deployed completely. And then he's asking for approval from a person, somebody from the team, in order to deploy it to the next stage. But he will not rebuild the artifact, right? This is important. You're deploying the same binary artifact through your stages. This is what you want to achieve. So let me pause the video one more time and see if this is going to work. So here he is. He's saying, okay, I successfully deployed integration again, six minutes, 15, uh, including, remember, applying my bicep template. So I think the way it should be. So now he's asking for permission in order to deploy the test stage, uh, the test environment in his naming, um, which is clear because he never deployed it. So I can, if I have the appropriate rights, I can uh, uh, view the permission, I can permit it, permit it again. And then he's waiting. He's not deploying it because this was only the uh, permission stuff. But now my approval is kicking in. Remember that when I set up the test stage, I told him, you need to wait for the approval of me in this case, or could be more people. And then this is now happening. I can review the approval, give a command. It's fine on int, whatever. And then I can approve. And after I approved, I have to just wait a little bit. He's updating it automatically. It's not yet started, but it should start in a second. Now he's starting and he's starting the deployment. This should take more time because as you can see in Azure, there is no test stage yet. So what I expect him to do is to completely not only deploy my application, but now he needs to create the complete stuff in Azure. And it's failing, by the way. <laughs> One check uh, has uh, passed, but the deployment failed. Let me check what's going on here. So deploy bicep and he's taking in, oh, you don't have a stage parameter file for the stage. Oh, I forgot this. So let's go here. If you know a little bit about uh, bicep, you should see that, yes, I'm missing uh, a parameters file for the test stage. So let's do it. Uh, totally fine. So let's do my dash test json which is giving him the parameters to deploy cf demo to west europe in test so there it is i am currently on the demo branch added um, template for um, uh, or parameter param file for test he's completely right commit and push see how this secures me from forgetting stuff also it's kind of unnerving because it takes some time, but this is, you know, the just punishment because I didn't think about doing the right thing. Okay, nice. So let me see. This is now, let me see. My pull request is, is it still running? No, I, I uh, had to uh, had to finish it. So let me start a new pull request with exactly this because now I have everything in place, right? I can just run it with a new pull request set to autocomplete, set to autocomplete. Now I will be back if first of all, the CD pipeline ran through. Second of all, if the integration pipeline ran through, I will just without you seeing it, um, I will approve the run then in the release. So this release uh, didn't work out pretty well. Uh, so interesting enough, this is the wrong one. Here is my CD pipeline, here it is. So currently, as you can see too, he's aware since this build that there are two stages, not one. So you can see it failed on my second stage. This is nice UI. So you completely don't need the release pipeline anymore. Let me delete it so that we don't get confused. This is the old way. So delete new release pipeline. Can I just delete it? Yes. The pipeline now is gone. We don't use it anymore. We go to pipelines only. As this is running, let me also explain why I'm doing two things. Most of the people will show you, by the way, that you can, let me refresh. Yeah, it's coming up. 
that you can simply put all the stuff of the CD pipeline into the CI pipeline and making it a CD, CI CD pipeline in one step. This is totally okay. And um, you know, it might be for some people logical. It's not for me. It's, it's just simply my taste uh, to separate those pipelines and connect them through the trigger in the YAML. So what I mean by trigger again is if I go to my uh, pipeline here, go to the top, so here's my trigger and this means this CD pipeline is connected to my CI pipeline. So they're connected. I have to add some stuff here. As you have seen, for instance, when I am in a running pull request, he's not redeploying it. So that's unnerving. I have to do something about it. But you know, the principle should be clear. So I like it this way, but there's no reason for you um, that you cannot take out simply the stuff here copy it out to your Azure pipeline. Let's say to the bottom here, all the, from here on, you can paste in all the CD related stuff. And then this is simply your single point of truth. Everything uh, in this pipeline is here and that's it. That's not a, not a problem at all. You can do it. And then you have, you would name it CI CD or whatever. So as I said, now let's go to demo. Let's go to the current run and he's deploying this one and I will be back when the um, a deployment of the test stage uh, is through, I will just approve it and then hopefully it will deploy everything. See you in a minute. So here I am back. It worked. So the pipeline tells me that um, it had uh, passed the test stage. So let's look first into Azure and let's refresh here this list. And as you can see now, there's a test stage. So the test stage is uh, completely the same as the in stage. Um, and now we can check if this website is showing us everything. Yes, it is. So we have a test stage here. Uh, so in principle, everything is working, which is pretty nice now. Of course, we would add additional stages here uh, as time comes. Uh, so as you can see, it took like, um, 10 uh, minutes or in in some like 36 minutes because I had to leave my chair between the approvals here. But uh, in total, it was about eight minutes or so, 18 and, a half, um, 18 and a half minutes. But remember that this pipeline will be faster, a little bit two minutes faster next time because it does not need to deploy everything new. And you could it in a more clever way do it in a more clever way. We have now two environments, uh, which we also would see in the pipeline itself, as you probably saw when we go here to the run, there it is. It shows us uh, that the environments are there. Also, what is interesting is that inside of Azure, I think we can now see the deployments happening. If you go to application insights, I hope, I hope this is already configured, I don't know. Let's look at availability or some graph. Is it showing anything here? It's not. Here it is. Uh, for example, in the failures exception, what you can see here is the deployment on the test stage. You see this? This is pointing out when the deployment happening happened here. So every time a deployment happens, you see this arrow. Let's look into the int resource group, which should have more than one deployment. Let's go to failures here and here you can see it, right? So let me zoom in a little bit here for you. So here you can see the single deployments, dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five. So everything is kind of neatly interconnected. You can even click on this thing and go directly to the deployment URI, which brings you to Azure DevOps uh, directly from the Azure portal. This is uh, the way it should be. So from now on, the process is kind of straightforward. Um, <clears throat> you are just working here in your Visual Studio and just uh, creating pull requests. And whenever you do a pull request against the main branch um, here in my scenario, um, <clears throat> so let's go to the pull request here. The current one is running. Let's approve it so that it's getting merged. So normally we would, you know, delete the branch and everything. Let's go back to the branches. Uh, <coughs> now, um, this thing is happy. I don't know why it's behind. 
um, to be honest. Uh, I don't think that is correct, but anyway. So now the main branch has no errors anymore and everything is kind of neatly interconnected. I like this approach. So with that, you have not used this, um, you know, stinky UI based release pipelines. And the best thing of all is that now when our service connection needs to change, because for whatever reason we need to change uh, or recreate it or whatever, that doesn't matter because all we do in our deployment script here, let me go back or in my, our deployment YAML is we are referencing it by this service connection name. And now whenever we fix the service connection and leave it at this name, everything will be good. So that is how it should be. So let me summarize. You saw a lot of stuff, some, you know, uh, happened to not work like in the first step, but that is exactly what I wanted to be because as always, uh, I don't want you to show you only the happy path. This is actually what's happening to you too. So I hope this is like a good overview of how to use CI CD pipelines in Azure DevOps, the modern way. Uh, it's not that new, but with this knowledge, you can easily adopt to other pipeline technologies like GitHub Actions, which is which are basically, you know, um, running the same principle, but doing it a little bit differently. Um, so um, uh, as always, I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. I will put some links into the description down below. And uh, I'm very, very uh, curious about your reactions and what you might see or want to see in one of the upcoming videos. Okay, see you, bye.